All right, good morning and welcome into Verbling.com. This is Adrienne here for pronunciation and poetry. So what we're going to be doing this class is reading some English poetry together out loud. And we're focusing on a couple of things today. We are focusing on pronunciation, we're focusing on intonation, and we're focusing on fluid or smooth reading. So you don't have to worry if you don't understand poetry very well or um, if you're not sure you will understand the poem because that's not what we're focusing on today. We're just going to be using the poems to practice our pronunciation and our intonation and really get a feel for um, speaking English in a very natural way. And poetry is just a fun way to do that. That's all. It's just a fun way to do that. Um, so if you are ready to come on in and join me for class, I would love to have you. This is an intermediate level class, so of course anyone is welcome. Anyone is welcome to join. And so again, what we'll be doing is taking a look at some poems and using these poems to practice our English pronunciation our English intonation, and of course our English flu, uh, flu I say fluency and I don't mean your ability to speak like a native speaker, I mean the, your ability to speak in a smooth way, and a smooth and in a natural way. So that's what we'll be taking a look at today. I will go ahead and tell you guys up front that vocabulary is a secondary concern today. Uh, so we're not going to be spending a lot of time talking about what words mean. So if you do have some questions about vocabulary, you may want to jot those down and ask at the end of class or even look them up on your own because today, again, our focus is on pronunciation and intonation. And a little bit about Verbling for those of you that may not be super familiar with it or maybe you're just, you're just watching for the first time. Verbling is an online language learning platform where you get to take classes with native speakers. It's a lot of fun. I've been doing it for a while now and I really, really enjoy it. So I really encourage you to try it out. You can watch our classes for free, which is really, really cool. Not a lot of places let you do that. Um, but if you want to fully participate, which I really recommend, um, you can get a subscription to Verbling. And then you can come to unlimited classes. It's really great. You get a subscription and you can come to as many classes as you want. No big deal. So I really recommend that you try it out. Um, it's something that you might really enjoy. We also do private lessons and private tutoring if you're interested in that. And you can always message me on verbling.com and say, hey, Adrian, I need help with my IELTS or I'm studying for the TOEFL. Can you help me out? And the answer is, Yes, I can. So, uh, let me go ahead and welcome in uh, Michael and Ismail. Welcome back, you guys. Hey, Eddie. Hey, guys. Long time no see for both of you, I know. Um, so, Ismail, I didn't get to ask you, um, because we'd already started when you came in earlier, but I didn't get to ask you, what are your plans for the weekend, Ismail? What will you do this weekend? I am going to visit uh, a museum on Friday. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Saturday. Uh -huh. uh, there is a museum in Ankara which is named Anatolian Civilization Museum. It was uh, renovated by, by the uh, Culture Ministry of Turkey, and I heard that uh, uh, many artifacts uh, are transported in this museum. Oh, uh, wow! It is a new uh, environment, some friends told me, and that's why I want to visit again and. Uh, see the, the new environment of the mm -hmm. museum. Mm -hmm. and I want to uh, bring my family too. Yeah. To yes. Yeah. So how far away is it from where you live? Is it an hour away or in the same city or? Uh, in the same city. 
Okay. Museum is in Ankara. I live in Ankara too. Okay, nice. Yes. Very, very good. Very good. So that sounds like a really good, a very good weekend. Yes, and uh, on Sunday mm -hmm. we are planning to go uh, outside and have a uh, brunch with my friends. Oh, very nice. You guys like brunch, don't you? Yes. <laughs> Do you have brunch with people every weekend, Ismail? Generally, we are going to on Sundays mm -hmm. uh, outside and have brunch with uh, our friends. Yeah, that sounds really nice, especially now that the um, that the weather is so nice. It's hard to be inside. Yes, uh, it is not so hot, not so mm -hmm. cold. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And hi, Miguel. It's the How, oh. <laughs> yeah, it is the perfect temperature. Totally. And hi, Miguel. How are you today? Hi. I'm fine. Thank you. Good. And um, where are you from, Miguel? Remind me. Where are you from? I'm from Mexico. That's, that's right. That's right. So it is very late for you? Like uh, 2 yeah. or 3 a.m.? Yes, it's 2 a.m. Wow. Well, thank you for coming to class at 2 a.m. <laughs> that is really late. Do you often come to classes um, this late or just sometimes? Uh, uh, no, I'm no frequent going to classes. Okay. Okay, so this is a special case one time thing yeah <laughs> yes all right guys so let's go ahead and get started and we may have some more people join us that's usually the case we have some people come in a little bit late um so again uh, we're doing pronunciation and poetry today so we're going to read some of my favorite poems um and all the while um or mean meanwhile practice our pronunciation intonation and fluid reading so let me put the first poem up on our screen. All right. All right. So this one is called Teacher, Shall I Write a Sonnet? So how this is going to work is I will read the poem first. Okay, because I think it's really important that you guys hear um, a native speaker read it. And then I want you to read it as well. And I want you to try and mimic or copy me as much as you can. Okay, because again, we're practicing uh, not only pronunciation, but intonation. And intonation is where you put stresses on the words. And actually, I want to show you something something first. Um, intonation also involves something that I like to call um, sort of the musicality of speech. And what this means is it's the ups and downs of your speech. Okay, it's the ups and downs of your speech. So some languages, when you hear people speaking these languages, it's up and down a lot. It's up and down a lot. They'll they'll say things like, um, and I, I I want to be careful because I don't want it to sound like I'm making fun of of anyone or, or any language, but it's just it's just different. Uh, so for example, if you're speaking to someone, um, I think Italian is very musical sounding. Okay, it almost sounds like a song. So when people speak in Italian, they they go up and they go down and they go up really high and they go down and their words are sort of up and down, almost like a song would be. And I actually really like this um, because English is not very musical. English is relatively a flat language. This has to do with uh, the sounds we have in our language. Uh, the number of consonants we have, it's, it, it, it gets really technical, but there's a, a real reason why some languages sound more musical than others. Um, so whereas Italian 
or Spanish or even French or even Russian. So some of these languages are a lot more musical sounding. Um, again, they'll, they'll, they'll go sort of up and down. So if you, if you listen to this sentence, um, I would like to have brunch this weekend. Okay, and again, I'm not making fun of anyone, okay? And I'm not even trying to do an accent. I just want to show you kind of what I'm talking about. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, again, how am I speaking? Can you uh, imitate um, me, please? Oh, me, okay, me. so I, I, I... I will be grateful okay, to I think, from you. I think you might say it like this, Michael, okay? I think you might say, I would like to have brunch this weekend. Okay, so did okay. you see how I went up and down a lot? Uh -huh. I would like to have brunch this yep. weekend, okay? Um, so it's not weird. It's it's musical because that's how Russian is. And so this this makes sense. Um, this is why it's difficult for English speakers as well, right? We go to other languages and we sound very bored. And people think we sound bored uh, because our we speak it kind of like this. But that's, that's because that's a little bit how English is. Now, English has those ups and downs. They just tend to not be as extreme. So I would say, I would like to have brunch this weekend, right? So whereas you might say, I would like to have brunch this weekend, right? Your voice is going up a lot. Mine would only go up maybe twice. I would like to have brunch this weekend, OK? So that's one of the things we're talking about when we talk about sort of intonation and the musicality of speech. And so that's something that I really want you guys to try and, and hit today as we're practicing the poetry. So you want to try and mimic the way I say this. This doesn't mean it's the only way to say it by any means. But I do want you to practice that English intonation, that smoothness, and that pronunciation. So we're going to try this today. And let's go for it. So the first one is called, Teacher, Shall I Write You a Sonnet? A sonnet is a special type of English poem. OK, all you need to know. Teacher, shall I write a sonnet? Must I? When I'm not so sure of my poetry, shall I write a poem of 14 lines? An iambic pentameter. By me? What shall I write about? What can I say? In the sonnet which I must jot down now, my sonnet should be about what today? To write a great sonnet, I'm not sure how. Teacher, I can write this sonnet later, for I'm not sure of what to write about. The teacher then takes my simple paper, and you already did, my teacher shouts. Detention, my teacher says, for lying. But thank you, she adds, for at least trying. All right, so. Uh, when you read, you mm -hmm. kind of, um, um, so uh, the third uh, line, the third, um, was that this uh, bunch of uh, four lines? A stanza, a stanza. So a paragraph of a poem is called a stanza. Oh, OK, so mm -hmm. uh, uh, stanza. So mm -hmm. when, when you read the third stanza, teacher, uh, can I write this sonnet later? You said, teacher, I can write this sonnet later. I did. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we switch words when we think our when our brain tells us that's what we would say and we don't okay. even notice. But yeah, that's right. Teacher, can I write this sonnet later? Looks I'm like, not sure uh, of what to write about. It looks like you are familiar with this with this poem like a lot. A little bit, a little bit. Uh, okay. so let me start with Ismail and Ismail, you're gonna read this poem for us. Okay. Teacher, shall I write a sonnet? Must I? When I am not so sure of my poetry, shall I write a poem of 14 lines? In iambic pentameter by me, what shall I write about? What can I say? In this sonnet which I must jot down now, my sonnet should be about what today? To write a great sonnet, I am not sure how. Teacher, can I write this sonnet later? For I am not sure of what to write about. The teacher then takes my simple paper and you already did, my teacher shouts. <laughs> Detention, my teacher says, for lying. But thank you, she adds, for at least trying. <laughs> Very good. Really good pronunciation there, um, Ismail. So let me hear you say iambic pentameter. Iambic pentameter. Iambic pentameter. Mm -hmm. 
One more time, pentameter. 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 Good. Iambic pentameter. Iambic pentameter. Good, good. And then um, one thing I noticed, so anytime we have a question mark in English, you want your voice to go up. So it's one of the few times when you know for sure your voice needs to, to go up uh, to indicate a question. Teacher, shall I write a sonnet? Must I? Shall I write a poem of 14 lines? In iambic pentameter. By me? So anytime you see a question mark, you want to go up with your voice. So let me hear you read uh, these two lines for me again. Ismail. What, sh what shall I write about? What can I say? In this sonnet which I must jot down now. Good. Good, good, good. Very, very nice. All right. So, Miguel, it's your turn. Miguel, can you read this poem for us? Teacher, shall I write a sonnet? Must I? But I'm not sure of my poetry. Shall I write a poem of 14 lines? I'm young, I'm young. pentameter by me. What shall I write about? What can I say? In this sonnet, which I must jot down out, my sonnet should be about one today. To write a great sonnet, I'm not sure how. I can write sonnet later. I'm not sure of what to write my my teacher shouts, detention, my teacher says, for lying, but thank you, she adds, for at least trying. <laughs> very good, very good, Miguel. Um, so let me hear you say a couple of things again for me. I want to hear you say iambic pentameter, iambic pentameter. Iambic pentameter. Very close. So it's not iambic, but iambic with a hard K sound. Iambic pentameter. Iambic pentameter. You got it. That was perfect. Now this one, be careful with this one. It's jot. It's so it's a J sound, but it's a hard J. So it's not a G, but it's not a J either. So it's not jot, but Jot. 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 Perfect. Perfect. Very good. Very good. You did well. You, you went up on the questions at the end. And your smoothness was really good. Very, very good pronunciation there. And I want to welcome in Khan and also Ken. Nice to see you guys. Glad yeah, you hello. Hi. <laughs> Glad to see you both with um, this. Um, yes. And let's see. Uh, let me have... Let's see. Let's actually do a different poem because we're going to get really bored if we're reading the exact same poem every time. So let me pull up a different one for us. One second. All right. Okay. So let me make this a bit bigger. All right. So this will be the next one. Uh, for Michael and Ken and Khan. So I'll read it first. Yes. She had blue skin, and so did he. He kept it hid. Whoops. I'm going to mute a couple of microphones. There's a lot of um, background noise. All right. She had blue skin, and so did he. He kept it hid, and so did she. They searched for blue their whole life through, then passed right by and never knew. So something to notice on this one is the punctuation here dictates or guides where I pause. She had blue skin, pause, and so did he. Longer pause. He kept it hid and so did she. No pause because there was no comma after hid. They searched for blue their whole life through, then passed right by and never knew. All right, so Michael, go for it. She had blue skin and... No, I'm just kidding. 
like uh, my <laughs> reference. <like. laughs> no, she uh, she had blue skin, and mm -hmm. so did he. He kept it hid, and so did she. They searched for blue, their whole life through, then passed by. Sorry, then passed right by, and never knew. Very good, really good pronunciation. Um, really nice joke at the beginning there as well. Um, <laughs> good, 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 good job with that. Um, let me hear you say one more time. They searched for blue their whole life through, then passed right by. They they searched for blue their whole life through, then passed right by, and never knew. Very good. Really, really nice. Very good. Very good everything, intonation, pronunciation, nice, nicely done. Um, okay. Ken, Ken, can you read this one for us, Ken? Yes, I can. Uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, Ken. There's Ken and there's Khan, so Ken first. Okay. Uh, she had blue skin, and so uh, and so did he. He kept it hit, and so did she. Uh, they searched for the bl for blue, uh, their whole life through. Then passed right by and never knew. Good. So a couple of things here, Ken, with pronunciation. Um, she had blue skin. So be careful that you don't add an uh sound. Um, so it sounded like she had a blue skin, which actually sounds like she had like a blue skin. Mm -hmm. um, so it sort of changes the meaning a little bit. So she had blue skin, and so did he. So that was a little tricky um, with the so did he. So try that those two lines for me again. She had blue skin, and so did he. She had blue skin, and so did he. Perfect, perfect. And then they searched for blue their whole life through. They searched for blue their whole life through. Good. One more time with through, through. Through. Yeah, there you go, Ken. All right, so in the sentence one more time, their whole life through. Their whole life through. Good, you got it. Perfect. All right, Khan, Khan, can you read this poem for us, please? Yes, I can. I try my best. Yeah. <laughs> she had blue skin, and so did he. He kept it hit, and so did she. They stood for blue their whole life through, then passed right by and never knew. Very good, very good. So one little part, um, and so did he. Let me hear that line again. And so did he. And so did he. And so did he. Yeah, there's something about that line that's a little tricky. It's it's so did. he. He, it's 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 a little tricky. So one more time, she had blue skin, and so did he. He kept it hid, and so did she. She had blue skin, and so did he. He kept it hid, and so did she. Very good. You got it, Khan. Nicely done. Very yes. very good. Very good. Khan, did you study? Um, I'm going to ask you. Did you study American English or British English? Uh, I studied. I studied British English. I knew it. I could tell. <laughs> it's a uh, not a not a bad thing. It's just it's just different. I could tell with some of your pronunciation. It sounds really nice, by the way. Really nice pronunciation, Con. Ejen, what, uh -huh. what English did I study? What English I studied? did you study? Um, yeah. I I honestly can't tell. Um, I do know that you've spent most of your time with American English speakers because of um. Because you've really mastered like sarcasm, and <laughs> that's a very American thing. Okay. So that would be my guess. Okay. But I can't. I can't tell because of pronunciation, though. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Let's take a look at a different one. Um, I really, really, poetry is. It really brings out um, things that are a little difficult to say. So sometimes you have to really work to sort of get your mouth around a word or get your tongue in the right place and so that's why it's so good to practice. So this one is called Hug a War and here we go. This is a very cute, very sweet poem. I will not play at Tug a War. I'd rather play at Hug a War where everyone hugs instead of tugs 
where everyone giggles and rolls on the rug, where everyone kisses and everyone grins and everyone cuddles and everyone wins. All right. It's a very sweet poem. Um, let's see. Ismael, can you read this one for us? Tug of war. I will not play at tug of war. I'd rather play at hug of war. Where everyone hugs instead of tags. Where everyone giggles and rolls on the rug. Where everyone kisses and everyone grins and everyone cuddles and everyone wins. Very good, very good. So let me hear you say the first two lines again, Ismail. I will not play at tug o' war. I'd rather play at hug o' war. I will not play at tug o' war. I'd rather play at hug o' war. Good, very good. I know you probably feel a little silly reading that um, as like an adult man, um, but it's good for English practice. So uh, very, very good, very good. All right, um, let's see. Um, Miguel, can you read this poem for us? Miguel? I will not play a talk of work. I rather play a hot of work, where everyone hugs in startled talks, where everyone jiggles and rolls the rock, where everyone kisses and everyone grins, and everyone cuddles and everyone wins. Very good. So let me hear you say not jiggles but giggles. 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 Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. And then, um, again, I will not play at tug of war. I'd rather play at hug of war. I will not play at tug of war. I'd rather play at hot, at hot of war. Okay, good. One more time. Hug of war. Hug of war. Hot of war. Good, good, good. That one's a little tough. That one's a little tough. All right, I think I'm going to make everyone read this one because I think every adult man should have to read a poem about hugging. Um, so let me see. Um, Khan, can you read this one for us, Khan? As me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I will not play at hug a word. I'd rather play at hug a word where everyone hugs instead of hugs. Where everyone giggles and rolls on the rock, where everyone kisses and where everyone grins and everyone cuddles and everyone wins. Good, very good, Khan, very good. So I want to hear you say um, part of this again, and I want you to, your pronunciation is great. I want to hear you um, really focus on the rhythm and on the intonation. So. Where everyone kisses and everyone grins and everyone cuddles and everyone wins. When everyone kisses and everyone grins and everyone cuddles and everyone wins. Very, very good. So that's the thing about rhyming poetry. When it rhymes, it really has a what we call a rhythm. So just like music. So it's like a boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. And this really helps you get a feel for for the English type of intonation. So um, let me have Ken. Can you read Hug a War, Ken? Okay. I, uh, I will not play at Tug of War. I'd rather play at Hug of War. Where everyone hugs instead of tugs. Where everyone gives and rolls on the hack, uh, rolls on the rack. Mm -hmm. Where everyone kisses and every, everyone grins and everyone cuddles. And everybody wins. <laughs> Very good. I like that. Um, so a couple of things here. Can you change tug o' war to tug of war, which is actually the correct way to say it. But in the poem, it's tug o' war. So okay. let me hear you say without the F, tug o' war, hug o' war. Tug o' war, hug o' war. <laughs> yeah, I know it sounds silly, and you, you probably feel I silly. <laughs> from more uh, old English, or I, I, I care, or... Sounds old in mm -hmm. poetic English. Yeah, that would be. Um, it could be. It could be. Also, sometimes when you see this O, it's just taken of, and it's shortened it. 
Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes when you see this O, it could be that it's older English. Other times, it's just a shortened form of of. Okay. So instead of tug of war, it's tug o tug o war. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure why we do that, but we do. Um, so really good, really good job, Ken. And hi, Artur. I want to welcome you in. Hi. Hi. Good to have you. And um, let's see, Michael, can you read Hug o War? Yep. I'll try my best. Go for it. So, I'll not play at Tug o War. I'd rather play at Hug o War where everyone hugs instead of tags, where everyone giggles and rolls on the rug, where everyone kisses and everyone grins and everyone cuddles and everyone wins. Very good, very good. Uh, one more, one thing at the beginning, you said, I'll not play. Yep. So you made it into a contraction, which yep. is, is great. That means you're speaking English all the time. Uh, but say it one more time, the way it's written, I will not play at tug of war. I'll not play at Tagore. Okay. Well, no, no, I know. I will not. I will not yeah. play Tagore. But you know why? Um, because um, I was taught um, here on Rebling that you mm -hmm. should, should speak with these kind of contractions. And when I read text, it's like um, articles. Something I try to like in my brain to and to read like with contraction because mm -hmm. it's like it's not natural to read like every syllable. Do not, do not like uh, it's not natural. Mm -hmm. it, well, it depends. It depends. So in conversation, yes, absolutely. We tend to use contractions a lot in English. Absolutely. So if I I, if you know, if we were just talking in class and I was saying, you know, I, I'll not do that tomorrow. Like I would probably say that instead of I will. But poetry is a little different. So with poetry, especially with rhyming poetry, okay, every syllable is important because it creates a rhythmic structure. So okay. the difference is. This is the way it's supposed to be rhymed. I will not. Okay, I'm. You're, I'm gonna get like all elementary school teacher on you here. Okay, I will not play at tug o war. So there's a certain amount of beats in the poem. Four. I'd rather play at hug o war. So Four. if you change it to I'll, what happens is I'll not. And so it's sort of you lose it. So you could make it work. You could draw it out. I'll not play at tug o war, but it throws you off just a little bit. Um, so with poetry, you always, always want to read it exactly as it's written on the page, because poetry again is a little different. So every word and every syllable is important because it's creating a rhythmic structure. So um, and anytime you're reading anything, I would say read it like it's written. So even if you're reading an article and it says they do not, I would read they do not instead of they don't. Uh, because for whatever reason, the author did choose that. Now, in conversation, though, yes, I would say, you know, use as many contractions as you want, Michael. Because if you don't use contractions, you're right. You don't sound natural. You're yeah. absolutely right. You sound sort of... Like a robot. Yeah, exactly. And so absolutely in conversation. But with reading, you want to stick with what's... Especially, especially in poetry. Okay. Yeah, so try that one more time. I will not play at tug o war. I'd rather play at hug o war. I will not play at tug o war. I'd rather play at hug o war. You got it. Perfect. And Artur, can you read this poem for us, please? Oh, uh, yes. I will not play at tug of war. I'd rather play at hug of war, where everyone hugs instead of tugs, where everyone giggles and rolls on the rug, where everyone kisses and everyone grins and everyone cuddles and everyone wins. Very good, very good. All right, you guys, nicely done here with with this one. So let's do another one. You guys are doing really, really good. Uh, you're definitely probably feeling a little bit silly, and that's also good. Um, so, how many, how much? How many slams in an old screen door? Depends how loud you shut it. How many slices in a bread? Depends how thin you cut it. How much good inside a day? Depends how good you live them. How much love inside a friend? Depends how much you give them. All right. 
So this one is going to be a little tricky because uh, the rhythm is different here. Um, so you'll question and then you'll do a statement. Question and a statement. Question and a statement. This is also going to be tricky because it's going. you're going to want to say depends on how good you live them them um, but again you have to read poetry like it's written so we've cut off the first part and we're just saying um, depends how good you live them okay and that's how a native speaker would say it depends how good you live them depends how much you give them all right so let me have uh, why? Let me, huh? why why did they need <laughs> to cut them uh, well it's most likely to give a feeling to the poem. So certain accents, certain dialects in English do this, okay? Uh, so particularly in the southern United States, when we speak English, we often cut off beginnings or endings of words. And you, you guys probably have this maybe in your own languages where certain speakers maybe they don't pronounce all of words or they add syllables sometimes and it sort of has to do with the dialect so for example people where I'm from will say hey are you gonna go with them okay are you gonna go with them are you going to go with them and it's a dialect thing are you gonna go with them I'll even say this if I'm at home talking to my dad, probably. Um, so it's just a dialect thing, and he's doing it to just sort of give a give a feel to his poem, make it sound like a person from maybe a certain place is reading it. Does that make sense, Ismail? Yes, I, I understand, but uh, <laughs> I don't understand uh, the cause. What is the cause? Why they always... Uh, use some contraction mm -hmm. okay. why do they need uh, why all of these contractions <laughs> okay, I, don't so understand. I don't know that I understand either to be perfectly honest Ismail um, because language <laughs> uh, I think uh, deteriorate uh -huh. and it is uh, <laughs> the most important part, part uh, it is very difficult for a new learner. For it me, is. Actually. It is. Yeah, it is. Um, so it's actually not a contraction. So it's not live them. It's them without the th. So that's the first thing. So it's the, It's supposed to be them, but they've taken the th off. And this is just a dial. It's a dialect thing. And it's actually a very, very common dialect thing. Very common. So if you were going to go to the United States, Ismail, there's a really, really high chance you would talk to someone who would say this, who would talk like this, who instead of saying them will say um. Okay? So it doesn't, I, I don't necessarily, it's not good English okay it's not good English but it is really really common and so it is good to know what it is and what it means um, I've also heard there's dialects in Britain that do this as well okay so there are dialects in Britain that do this as well where they'll cut off the beginnings of things like them and just say um so you just have to kinda of say okay that's kind of stupid I don't like that but now I know what they mean when they say it. Uh, so let me have uh, Ken. Can you read this one for us, Ken? Okay. Uh, I forgot the reason. Da, 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 da. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, do you need me to read it again, Ken? I uh, sure. One, one sentence. Or two, one or two oh, sentence. Okay. Okay. I, I How to get the rhythm. In the rhythm. This one's a little different. Um, How many slams in an old screen door? Depends how loud you shut it. How many slices in a bread depends how thin you cut it. Yeah. All right. How many slams in an old screen door depends on how loud you sit, shut it. How many slices in a bread depends on how thin you cut it. How much good inside a day depends on uh, depends how good you live them. 
How much love inside a friend depends on how much you give them. Good, very good. So one thing um, is that you added on several times. Uh, so depends on how loud you shut it or depends on how thin you cut it, which would also be correct grammar. But try and read it again for me, Ken, and just read what's on the page. So resist the urge to change it um, and read exactly the, uh, what's there on the page. Okay. How many slams in an old school door? Depends how loud you shout it. How many slides in a bread? Depends on how thin you cut it. How much good inside a day? Depends on how good you're living. Uh, how much love inside a friend? Depends on how much you're given. Okay, so you still did it. <laughs> Again, that's okay. <laughs> so you said it depends on how much you give them, oh. but there's no mm -hmm. on there at all. Oh, so, wow. <laughs> so, no, oh my no, gosh. I do this stuff too. Um, yeah. I do it sometimes. I think Michael did it earlier. We all do it. So depends how loud you shut it. Say just that line. Depends how loud you shut it. Depends how loud you shut it. Yes. Depends how thin you cut it. Depends how thin you cut it. Depends how good you live them. Depends how good you live them. Depends how much you give them. Depends how much you're given. Good, 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 good. Okay. I do that kind of thing all the time, Ken. I mean, I did it earlier, right? Um, I totally switched words around. Um, so, Artur, Artur, can you read this poem for us? Artur? Sure. How many slams in an old screen door? Depends how loud you shut it. How many slices in a bread? Depends how thin you cut it. How much good inside the day? Depends how good you leave them. How much love inside the friend? Depends how much you give them. Very good, very good. All right, Khan, can you read this poem for us, Khan? Yes. How many slam in, a, in an old screen door depends how loud you said it. How many um, slices slices in a bread depends how thin you cut it. How much good inside a day depends how it good depends how good you live them. How much love inside a friend depends how much you give him. Very good, very good. All right. So Ismail, can you read this one for us? How many slams in an old screen door depends how loud you shout it. How many slices in a bread depends how thin you cut it. How much good inside a day Depends how good you live in. How much love inside a friend? Depends how much you give in. Very good. So you did it. You did it, Ismail. <laughs> Very good. Um, Michael, can you read this poem? Okay. How many slams in an old screen door? Depends how loud you shut it. How many slices in a bread? Depends how thin you cut it. How many good inside a day? Depends how good you live them. How much love inside a friend? Depends how much you give them. Very good, very good. You really nailed the give them and live them. So very good. And Miguel, can you read this one for us? How many slams in an old screen door? Depends how long you sh shut it. Mm -hmm. How many slides? In a bread, depends how thin you cut it. How many good inside a day, depends how good you live it. How lot inside a friend, depends how much you give it. Very good, very good. One more time, let me hear you say, depends how much you give them. Depends how much you give it. Very good, very good. All right, so let's see. Let me pull up our next one. Some of these are a little too short. All right, let's do this in the nail biter. Some people manicure their nails. Some people trim them neatly. Some people keep them filed down. 
I bite them off completely. Yes, it's a nasty habit, but before you start to scold, remember, I have never ever scratched a single soul. So the rhythm here is difficult, so I'm going to do that one more time. Some people manicure their nails. Some people trim them neatly. Some people keep them filed down. I bite them off completely. Yes, it's a nasty habit, but before you start to scold, remember, I have never ever scratched a single soul. So let me have... Let me start with con this time. Sorry, Con, I couldn't hear you. Can you can you say that again? Me? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> sorry, sorry, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I read it. Mm-hmm. Some people uh manic I'm sorry that with me, I don't know how to pronounce this word. Manicure. Manicure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a new word. Manicure. Some people manicure their nails. Some people trim them neatly. Some people keep them fine down. I, I bite them off completely. Yes, it's not a habit, but before you start this code, remember I have never ever scratched a single soul. <laughs> good, very good. Uh, yeah, manicure is maybe a new word for some of you. Um, and so a manicure is just um, to take care of your nails. So it could yeah. be to file them or to keep them clean or to paint them even. So anything having to do with taking care of your nails. So let me hear a couple of things again, Con. Um, some people keep them filed down. I bite them off completely. Can you say that part again? Some people keep them filed down. I bite them off. I buy them off completely. Okay, so you got to resist the urge, Con to say I bite them off. So here it's I bite um off. So try that again. I bite them off completely. I bite them off completely. Good. Very good. Um, and yes, it's a nasty habit. Yes, it's a nasty habit. Yes, it's nasty habit. Close, close. Um, remember that A in there. Yes, it's a nasty habit. Yes, it is. It is. Yes, is. A nasty habit. You got it. That was perfect. Yes, it's a nasty habit. Good. All right. Let me have uh, Miguel. Can you read this poem for us, Miguel? Some people manicure their nails. Some people trim them neatly. Some people keep them fill up down. I bite them off completely. Yes, it's a nasty habit. But before you start to scold, remember. I had never ever scratched a single soul. <laughs> Very good. Um, so let me hear, yes it's a nasty habit, but before you start to scold. Yes it's a nasty habit, but before you start to scold. Yes, it's a nasty habit, but before you start to scold. Good. Very good. Nicely done. All right. Um, let's see. Artur, can you read this poem for us? Yes. Some people manicure their nails, some people trim them neatly, some people keep them filled, filled down, I bite them off completely. Yes, it's a nasty habit, but before you start to scold, remember, I have never ever scratched a single soul. <laughs> very good, very good, nice. Um, all right, Michael, can you read this poem? Yep. Um, some people manicure their... Some people... One second. Some people manicure their nails, some people trim them neatly, some people keep them filled down. I buy them off completely. Yes, it's a nasty habit, but before you start to scold, remember, I have never ever scratched a single soul. So very, very good. So let me hear you say filed down. Some people keep them filed down. Okay. Some people keep them filed down. Good, very good. You got it. Good intonation there as well. And Ismail. The nail biter. 
Some people manicure their nails, some people trim them neatly, some people keep them felt down. I buy them off completely. Yes, it's a nasty habit, but before you start to scold, remember, I have never ever scratched a single soul. Very good, very good. Let me hear you say the first two lines again. Some people manicure their nails. Some people trim them neatly. Some people manicure their nails. Some people trim them neatly. Good. Now one more time with manicure. So with manicure, the word drops off at the end. Manicure. So I almost stepped down with my pronunciation. Some people manicure their nails. So try that line again. Some people manicure their nails. Some people manicure their nails. Good, good. You sounded more, um, even more natural and native there. So very good. All right, and Ken. Okay. Uh, some people manicure the nail. Some people trim their neatly. Uh, trim their neatly. Some people keep them files down. I buy them off completely. Yes, it's a nasty habit, but before you start start to scold, remember I have never ever scratched a single soul. Very good. Let me have you say yes, it's a nasty habit, but before you start to scold. Okay. Yes, it's a nasty habit, but before you start to scroll, it's cold. <laughs> good, good, yeah, yeah. So um, one more time. Yes, it's a nasty habit, but before you start to scold. Yes, it's a nasty habit, but before you start to scroll. Root. <laughs> okay, let's just try this word for a second. It's a hard one. Scold. 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 Yeah, so it's literally cold with an S at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So think s cold, s cold, cold. Yeah, mm -hmm. just s cold, s cold, s cold. Yeah. cold. <laughs> so tr yeah, so try that all together now. Yes, it's a nasty habit, but before you start to scold. Yes, it's a nasty habit, but before you start to scold. <laughs> it's, no, no, I, I just completely get it when there's a word that it just gives you trouble. You should hear me try German. It's, it's terrible. I, it's I, so I, I did say really scroll. <laughs> <laughs> no. So let's try yeah. it again, Ken, and you're going to get it, okay? So instead of trying to say scold, try S cold. S, S cold. Cold. S cold. 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 Yeah, and just think about it like that. Think about the word cold, but with an S sound in front of it. So mm -hmm. it's like a snake is trying to say the word cold. Scold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so th I, I type snack. Snake. A snake is trying to say the word mm -hmm. cold. S cold. 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 Yep, there you go. All right. Um. So let's see. Let's see, I think that's everyone for the nail biter. So let me find a really good one for us to do last. Oh, I like I like this one, the baddie. The baby bat screamed out in fright. Turn on the dark, I'm afraid of the light. It's just cute, but we won't practice that one. Let's do a little bit more. Okay, let's do this one, a light in the attic. An attic is the room like at the top of the house where you store things. There's a light on in the attic. Though the house is dark and shuttered, I can see a flickering flutter, and I know what it's about. There's a light on in the attic. I can see it from the outside, and I know you're on the inside, looking out. So be careful with this one again. We've dropped the G's, so flickering and looking, but that accent mark or apostrophe tells us that we've dropped the G. Flickerin and lookin. There's a light on in the attic. Though the house is dark and shuttered, I can see a flickerin flutter, and I know what it's about. There's a light on in the attic. I can see it from the outside, and I know you're on the inside. Looking out. 
So let's try this. Uh, let me start with Michael this time. Um, there's there is a light on in there is a light on in the attic. Though the house is dark and shattered, I can see a flickering flutter, and I know what it's about. There is a light on the on in the attic. I can see it from the outside. I know you are on the inside. Look out. Good. Very good. <laughs> it's kind of uh, difficult. Uh, there is a light on in the attic. Yeah. On in the attic. Yeah, on in the attic. Yeah, it is hard. Yeah, <laughs> you're totally right. Um, so we have Miguel. Can you read this one for us, Miguel? There is a light on in the attic. So the house is there and shutter. I can see the flickering flutter, and I know what it's about. There's a light on in the attic. I can see it from the outside, and I know you're you're on the inside, looking out. Very good. Let me hear you say, "There's a light on in the attic. I can see it from the outside, and I know you're on the inside. I can see it from the outside." And I know you're on the inside. I can see it. I can see it from the outside, and I know you're you're on the inside. Very good. Very good. All right. Let me have um, Ismail. Can you read this one? A light in the attic. There is a light on in the attic. Though the house is dark and shattered, I can see a flickering flutter, and I know what's about. There's a light on in the attic. I can see it from the outside, and I know you are on the inside looking out. Very good. Very, very good, Ismail. All right, Khan, can you read this one? Yes. There's uh, there's a light on in the attic. Though the house is dark and shattered, shattered, I can see a flickering flutter, and I know what it's about. There's light there's light on in the attic. I can see it from the outside, and I know you're on the inside, looking out. Good. So let's try, though the house is dark and shuttered. Though the house is dark and shuttered. Though the house is dark and shuttered. Very good. Very good. All right. And Artur, can you read this one for us? There is a light on in the attic. Though the house is dark and shuttered, I can see a flickering flutter, and I know what's about and there is a light on in the attic. I can see it from the outside, and I know you are on the inside looking out. Very good. Let me hear you say, I can see a flicker and flutter. I can see a flicker and flutter. I can see a flickering flutter. You got it. Good. Very good. All right. And Ken, last but not least, can you read this poem for us? Okay. Uh, there's a light on in the attic. Though the house is dark and shuttered. I can see a f flickering flutter, and I know what it's about. There's a light on, <laughs> there's a light on the, in the attic. I can see it from the outside, and I know you're on the inside, looking out. Good. So let me hear you say that same line. I can see a flickering flutter. I can see I can a flickering flutter. I can, I can see a flickering flutter. Very good. Very good. All right. Really, really nice job, you guys. We are out of time. Uh, that was really, really good. I'm going to give you the link to these poems uh, so that if you want to go back and maybe practice them again, um, you can always you know, view the class again. So if you want to hear me reading them again, you have that option as well. Um, and then you have the, the poems written down as well. So I'll give you guys that link. So really, really, really nice job today, you guys. Uh, there were lots of lines and words that were easy to trip over or really struggle with, um, but we were able to really sort of wrap our mouths and our tongues around, around the word and be able to really like handle it. So really, really well done.
good, good intonation especially. It was mostly pronunciation that we ended up struggling with today, not intonation. Uh, so you guys did really well with good American or British sounding intonation. So two thumbs up for you. Um, I'll see you guys later. I have a couple classes uh, much, much later today, so maybe I'll see you guys again. And if not, um, have a great weekend. Bye, everyone. Okay. Thanks for coming.